All right, now a number of you have asked, so I'm gonna do a video on it. I'm on my roof, and a lot of people have been asking about an update on my solar system. So, we hit a heat record today, at least downtown. It was 38 degrees Celsius, which, for my American friends, that's 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It is May 30th today, and it is crazy hot down here. Crazy, crazy hot. So, the good news is, my solar system is producing like gangbusters. And, um, you know, one, one thing that's great about this system, besides the fact that I'm producing a lot of energy, and I'll talk about how much I'm producing and what I anticipate this will save me in power over the years, but one of the great things about it that I've just discovered is that it keeps my house a lot cooler. Like, my home is significantly cooler inside right now. And, I mean, I guess it seems obvious, right? I mean, all that heat pounding on my roof is no longer directly on my roof, but on the solar panels. So it's reducing the amount of heat that's in the ceiling of my home. I guess that's making it a little cooler. It's it's quite significant, actually. The home has been very cool. We haven't had to run any air conditioning or anything. So very, very hot. Right now, we're producing, on average, about 75 kilowatts a day. So that's been going on for the last two and a half weeks. And that's basically if it's if it's a clear day all day. So I've totaled up my energy use from last year and I was around 30,000 kilowatts for the year. Now that's a lot and I, and I know that's a lot and there's some things that I'm going to improve this year for my winter farming that are going to tighten that up a little bit. I don't expect that I'll use quite as much energy. The reason I used that much energy during the winter is that I was heating my hothouse, my, the house that has the tomatoes in it right now, and I was heating that in January and February, and I probably shouldn't have. You know, I'm always experimenting, but I spent $4,500 in electricity for November through March, so that is ludicrous, right? These are the mistakes and the trial and error that we make, and this is why I share it with you guys, so maybe you can save some money in these mis uh, by not making the same mistakes I did. But, um, I shouldn't have, like in retrospect, I shouldn't have been heating that for the lettuce because the return on that lettuce wasn't really worth it at that time. There's not enough daylight hours in there. Uh, it wasn't, you know, I had to do it, I had to figure it out basically. And I kind of like to do that. I, I just go for things and I try it out. Having said that, if I were to fill that with microgreens and I could like say 10x my microgreen production, then that could certainly justify the cost. But with lettuce, it didn't justify it. So that's okay, lesson learned. But as it stands right now, it's looking like the solar that I'm going to generate is going to at least reduce my overall consumption by half. I think it will be more if I can increase some efficiencies. I'm not going to heat the hothouse, the tomato house, for those three cold months. So that's a, that 6,000 watt heater that I have in there is going to reduce, that is going to be quite significant. Um, I imagine that at that point I'll, some, I'll be somewhere around 75% reduction. You know, if I was just, if I just had a house here and I had this much solar, I'd be producing far more than I'm consuming. The main reason that I consume as much as I do is because I've got two walk-in coolers running right now. Um, both of them aren't always running 24-7, but one's always running 24-7. I've got circulation fans running in both greenhouses, exhaust fans running in the nursery. You know, my farm is consuming a lot of power. And that's, that's partly why I got solar to begin with. So, you know, this has kind of been my learning experience so far. And um, what, I'm, what I've been doing lately is I've got this great app that I use and uh, it's, it's all connected to the internet and I get live updates on my phone and on my computer and I can look at how much I'm generating. I can, it can generate spreadsheets, I can look at averages and I love that kind of stuff, I'm a total numbers geek. So I've been just kind of following how it's increasing and my production is, is still going up a little bit because we're not quite at the summer solstice. So for us, the summer solstice is when the sun is the highest in the sky and it's, it's the sunniest time of the year. And that period stays pretty damn sunny until August. So I'm, I'm thinking that next month in June, I'm going to break 22 or, or 2,000 kilowatt, kilowatt hours per month. 
and it might even be more. I, I think it might even be 2250. We're almost at 2000 this month. And, uh, but we, we did have some rain this month too. So usually going into summer, we have a lot less rain. Having said that, June historically is our rainy month, but we had so much rain at the beginning of the season that I'm, my sort of farmer sense is telling me that we're not going to have it in June, but we'll see. I could be wrong, but um, that's kind of where it's looking right now that this, this system will be producing over half of the energy that I consume. That will be saving me about, by my estimation, and it, you know, I, this, this isn't hard science or this isn't completely confirmed yet. I'm going to need a full year to really get this, figure this out. But I'm thinking it's going to save me anywhere between $4,500 to $8,000 in energy per year. So that's just speculation at this point. So having said all of that, I still have more options. So if I go a year and I, and I don't generate as much power as I'd like to, I still have the option to put some panels on this roof and they would be on a slight riser. So I could put at least another 12 panels on there. So we'll see, I, I'm, not, I'm not for certain that I'll do that. But um, right now I'm pretty happy with what it's doing. It's pretty cool that you know it's producing so much. Like right now we're producing way more than I consume. My average consumption from last year, I basically took the total kilowatt hours I consumed last year and just divided it by 356 days or 365 days and it arrived at 96 kilowatt hours per day. That's a lot, but keep in mind that's because I'm running my farm and my house. So if you guys are curious about where I got my solar, who installed it and all that, it's called TerraTech. I'll leave the link below. Check them out. If you're in the Okanagan, they did a fantastic job on this system and I'm really happy with it so far and totally stoked that my house is powered by the sun. All right, guys, we'll talk to you later.